Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eon's Battle. Games Workshop has shown off a whole bunch of new goodies that they will be slowly releasing over the next six months, if not to a year, because Games Workshop doesn't like to really plan things out, but they shown them off and I want to take a look at them. First up, Kill Team Season 3, Episode 2, Nightmare. In my opinion, and I like Kill Team quite a bit, Kill Team Season 3 so far has been just a little bit of a dud because we haven't really gotten anything new. Historically, the first launch box of a season has been epic. The new one is just two things that we need for 40k put in a box together. And the second episode also seems to be two things sort of needed for 40k shoved into a box together. The Night Lords are pretty darn cool, and Games Workshop already showed them off. Although I built my Chaos Space Marine kill team as Night Lords, so I kind of don't need another Night Lords kill team. But for the second half of this box, Dark Eldar Mandrakes. I was not expecting to see much Dark Eldar. I was hoping, I was hoping against hope that this year Eldar and Dark Eldar would get their codexes, but, and it could happen if we're getting Mandrakes. Mandrakes are one of the many, many units that used to be metal and then fine cast, and then Games Workshop dropped them from the range about a year ago without removing those rules from 40k. So currently in Dark Eldar, like a third of the codex is unpurchasable, but totally playable on the tabletop, and you need them because the Dark Eldar don't have that many units. So we got ourselves some Mandrakes, and I adore the Mandrakes. A very cool, very spooky unit. I love the old models so much. They're just so spooky. And the lore of the Mandrakes is incredible. They're a nightmare to the Dark Eldar. They exist in like an ethereal dimension and they can appear out of literal shadows. Like if you're walking and you got a shadow on the ground, a Mandrake can pop out of there. And like if you've ever seen Harry Potter 3, when the Dementor comes on the train and everything gets cold and quiet, that's what it's like when a Mandrake shows up. Just ice starts to form on things. They have an attack profile, or they had they used to have a weapon profile where that caused pinning, so you could actually freeze a unit in place, which was to show like their icy chill, their faces. It's like um, Rorschach from Watchmen. Their faces are constantly just changing, and every now and then they'll just turn into a giant mouth of razor sharp teeth. They have this disgusting hair. They've kind of got Japanese inspired clothing. And I lay all this lore on you to say the new models to me are kind of eh. They're fine. They're very good. I They are very nice models, but they don't to me. The new models don't give the horror that the Mandrakes are. They just kind of seem like like Warcry spoopies, like Warcry guys. They don't feel cold and vicious. They they kind of seem like, you know, generic villains. And they're cool and they're interesting. And 10 to a box is excellent because really you want two squads of five because they're not an incredible unit. They're okay at killing infantry, but everything is okay at killing infantry. Their real thing is like their ability to deep strike. And I think they might have a scout move. Like they are objective shenanigan unit and it's super cheap at like 65 points you need them in a dark elder army so it is fantastic to get them <sighs> but they just they're not jimmy and my jams they're not flimming my flams they're not dingling my pringle like they're wrote like this i think it's the fire it's how just kind of open and loose they are the, the, the old models weren't perfect number one it was four models for a five-man squad one of them was duplicated because I think it's laziness. So the old models weren't perfect, but I think that one old model, like the sergeant, was really doing a lot of work. Just this, just this pose, just waiting with his little sickle. He's just ready. And I just imagine like they don't move. They just appear out of the shadows. And then with one perfect swordsmanly swing, they just like decapitate their prey. Where these guys, they feel like duelers and brawlers and they're kind of running around, bouncing off the walls. I don't know. They're okay. They're they're perfectly fine. They're very good. They got an awful lot of magic going on, which they they have a, like a warp fire attack. Like I get it. That's a magic wasn't the most important thing to me. It was their just their just general demeanor was what I really really liked. And I feel like I lost their general demeanor. It could be the paint job. It's very kind of 
everything is just picked out. Maybe a little bit more of a grim, dark paint job would bring back a lot of that spoopiness. They're they're OK. I, I am I'm not against them. I'll definitely be picking up a box because I only have five of the old mandrakes. And so I'm going to need some more for my list. They're they're OK. I'm I'm OK with them. I'm being incredibly nitpicky, but it's just because I like the mandrakes so much. But speaking of Kill Team, Kill Team was not the only skirmish game to get some new stuff. Warcry, Pyre, and Flood. I have not been following Warcry that closely. I've played it a couple times. It's a really fun game. I feel like hasn't Warcry gotten like a half dozen Night Haunt teams? Maybe I'm confusing it with Underworld, but I feel like this isn't the only time we've gotten Night Haunt. They're cool. I like Night Haunt models. They always look pretty epic. These guys look fantastic, especially the sergeant guy with two little two little balls and one of them's got the spooky ghost and the other one the spooky ghost is coming out of it these guys are really cool but the lumineth guys i don't love the lumineth they're cool but these guys i feel like are um, excellent kit bash fodder like if you want some kind of generic ninja dudes i feel like these are some fantastic poses Really easy to get rid of those stumps that they're jumping off of and make them into whatever basing scheme you need. Some head swaps and weapon swaps. These are some very, very usable bodies. And I kind of like the masks with no faces or no mouths. It's kind of a spooky look. These, these guys are pretty darn cool. I don't know if I want uh, Lumineth ninjas for Warcry, but I could see like if I was playing like space weirdos or something, and I wanted a team of like sci-fi ninjas, just get some Mac 10s to go in their hands and like some some punky, maybe Necromunda Escher faces. Could be makes for some really, really cool minis. But speaking of some really, really cool minis, Warhammer 40,000 gets some new minis and it's something I knew was coming eventually. I didn't know it was coming today, but new Kroot. I like the Kroot a lot. I Right now is a great time to buy Kroot because the old box of Kroot was 16 figures in a box. I think right now it's on the Game Search web store for 45 bucks. Maybe eBay's got them even a little bit cheaper than that. But like $2 and some change is a really good price for some Games Workshop minis. That Prices like that don't come along very often. It's usually for kits that are really old. But the Kroot hold up really, really well. But speaking of holding up, the new minis are absolutely glorious. The Kroot Warshaper. One thing that they don't show off in this article is the old one could, you would get him in a blister and he would either have a Kroot rifle or he would have a Tau Pulse Carbine. I always thought that was kind of a nice touch because they are allies of the Tau. So it'd be, so it's nice that he's like, I want, a, I want a Tau gun. I don't want a Kroot gun. I want a really good gun. But it looks like he just has a normal weapon. Ooh, or he could also have a crossbow and a shuriken. Ah. Yeah, the new model is absolutely epic. The Flesh Shaper is hopefully something that makes the Kroot really, really good. Because currently Kroot are just kind of wimpy and they're not great at shooting and they're not great at fighting. So hopefully this guy can give them like plus one attack or plus one strength on the charge or something to make them like a big blob of Kroot really, really epic. And the new Kroot are incredibly faithful to the old Kroot, which is excellent because it means that they're going to look really good alongside the old Kroot. Oh, and he's got a little baby Kroot hound. Oh, look at the little man. Oh, that is absolutely adorable and kind of horrifying to think about because the way Kroot evolution works is that they take on the traits of whatever they eat, kind of like Kirby. And so does that mean that a Kroot baby was like eating a bunch of dogs? And so it turned into a dog. <laughs> it's a little, that's a little weird to think about, but it's so adorable. It's so cute. Ah, the new Kroot are excellent. They look really, really good. I kind of want a set to have some different poses to the 16 that I already have. But the heads still kind of have the same problem that the old Kroot heads had. And that is having to be made in a two-piece mold, but their head is just like a big uh, porcupine quill. I have some 3D printed heads from online that are excellent because the quills are open and separate and they look really, really good. The new ones have the same thing as the old heads where all the quills are kind of smushed together so that they can be made in a single part mold. And I'm kind of glad that Games Workshop didn't make the head of 
every single crew into like three pieces because that also would have been annoying. But they do kind of have flat heads when they should have just a big bouquet of these weird quills. So I think even on the new Crude, I will probably throw on the 3D printed heads just to have them be absolutely perfect. But these guys are awesome. That little, that little Crude Hound is so cute. Oh, I really, really want it. Oh, and the, the, not the Narlock, the Crutox. I have two Crutoxes and they're probably significantly smaller than this Crutox. Maybe not because the Crute standing on him doesn't look that big. Ah, oh, just this big gorilla Crute. Once again, going along with the Crute lore, that's a Crute who was eating a bunch of gorillas. And so he turned into a gorilla. Ah, oh, he looks really, really good. He's got some sort of like a net launcher and he's got his, his little gun, his little Crute long gun. Ah, oh, that guy is really cool. Definitely a, definitely a departure from the old Crute Rider because the old one was fairly plain and pretty small and the new one is bedazzled. I like all of the decorations that are on his quills and his big just arms full of bangles. It really looks great. But surprisingly, that is not the only new Crute thing. I guess the Crute sha uh, Flesh Shaper is new, but a brand new unit in the Crute Rampagers, which is kind of the exact same thing, but it's the close combat version of the Crutox. And that is really interesting because how famously stink in close combat, and it's true, they're garbage. So having like a dedicated quality close combat unit in the Tau Codex is actually really, really cool and a nice touch. Ooh, or if they ever, I'm sure this is all the crew we're getting because it totally fulfills all the requirements of the, the crew were getting pretty old and there wasn't much to them. So now the crew are a nice fleshed out sub faction within the Tau Codex, but I would love a crew army of the greater Narlock. The Crute Riders, these old Forge World units that have been discontinued for like 10 years. Ah, the Crute are really, really cool. In my opinion, cooler than the Tau. And they just kind of make up a necessary element of 40K, which is that they're the mercenaries. They're, they're kind of the scumbag thieves, criminals, and scoundrels. And I feel like they fit really nicely into 40K. And I feel like let them ally in with whatever. Maybe not the Tyranid, but... I feel like you can, you know, you give them some nice meats, some nice, you know, Arby's Wagyu beef burgers, and they'll fight for you. They don't care. In the article, it says the Crute are so back, in fact, that they even have their own dedicated detachment in the new Codex Tau Empire. Don't know if I love that, that they have their own separate book you gotta buy to get the rules. Allowing you to deploy an all Crute force. Ah, Games Workshop. Ah, they knew it before I even said it. Replent with thematic enhancements and stratagems, the galaxy won't know what ate them. Cause Kirby, cause they get the power ups from eating things. These aren't even all the new crew units coming, but you'll have to wait to see what else is in store. Didn't one of our silhouettes in our sneak peek of the 2024 have a crew, a very crew like shape? Huh, so that wasn't the crew tox? It looked a lot like the crew tox gun, but maybe it wasn't. Interesting. So Games Workshop, is giving me exactly what I want, a crude army. Ooh, I might have to go on eBay like now and pick up a couple more boxes of 16 crutes. Oh, okay, okay, Games Workshop. You might've gotten me. You might've gotten me. I mean, I was already completely on board with the little baby crute, but okay, that's pretty darn cool. Very big, big thumbs up for the 40K reveals. That is pretty awesome. But enough Warhammer 40k, Age of Sigmar. I feel like I haven't been hearing much about Age of Sigmar because Old World's coming out. And so like literally in none of my Facebook groups, nowhere online am I hearing much about Warhammer Age of Sigmar. But there's a new mini, a new Daughters of Cain model, but apparently not like a bad Daughters of Cain. The Daughters of Cain, they're part of the faction of order, but like they're the worst and no one likes them. But apparently this character is actually a good guy, Daughter of Cain. And I like this model. I like this model a lot. It is the definition of a monopose model. It is a very specific pose, but it's such a good pose. It's just, it's so like, just artsy. Like it looks like a picture or a painting. It looks like something out of a panel of a comic book. It's not just generic soldier running or jumping or aiming or slightly aiming down. 
It is like a proper thematic artistic pose. And I don't play Doubters of Cain. I'm not going to play Doubters of Cain, but I'm going to buy this model because, you know, Games Workshop, you, you, you heard my brain waves with the crew. So for the Dark Elder, the Jukari, sorry, I'll, I'll get the name right one of these days. They're um, the Scourges, a elite Scourge is called a Solarite. And right now you can only get an Archon. You can't get a character or a hero or an HQ that has the fly. Unlike the Eldar, the Eldar, they can just take wings and fly around. But if you gave me a Solarite, I mean, I'm going to kitbash this model into a Solarite. How like it would be so perfect. Like it's just get rid of that spear and replace it with a dark lance. Maybe do a head swap. And then if you get all that hair out of the way, maybe I can add in a bunch of like little tubes and their little uh, their little like venom injectors into the wings. Replace that beautiful arch. Maybe not replace that beautiful arch because I kind of like the idea of the Dark Elder just ruining everything that they touch. But probably get rid of the crows and replace them with like cyber crows or something. Like I see so much potential in this model for a Solarite. Doesn't exist, not currently a thing in the game. If I had to guess, probably not gonna become a thing in the game, but why would they mention it in the fifth edition codex of Dark Eldar if we would never see a Solarite? Why even put that in the codex from like 15 years ago? <laughs> it's, it's not gonna be a thing, but I'm gonna make it a thing. I'm gonna physically make it into a thing with this model because it would work so well. We got a little more Age of Sigmar. We got some dudes. I, <laughs> the, I, I may or may not have been looking into Old World and kind of the lovely thing about some Old World models is they're kind of a blank canvas to work from. The new characters and heroes and stuff for Age of Sigmar, I mean, I guess these are all characters. So, oh, and aren't they, aren't these just characters from Warcry? Or not Warcry, Underworlds, Underpants? I don't remember if I recognize these models or not. They all kind of look the same though, is my point. They are all completely decked out from head to toe, head to toe in absolutely ridiculous garb. Their costumes don't really make any sense because they're like wearing armor on top of scale mail and the scale mail is on top of chain mail and the chain mail is on top of like heavy quilted cotton armor. It's it's kind of a mess and it kind of makes it a mess to paint. Where if you just got if you just got something a little bit simpler, you can almost do more with it. Like these characters are really cool and I like this cat. The the nudie cat, like the naked cat is a really cool cat. I want that cat. Ooh, and the lady who comes with the cat would make a really good rogue trader. Really change you wouldn't have to change a single thing about her. She would, I guess, get rid of the cobblestone base, but yeah, that would be, that's really cool. Ah, a, a naked cat with a cyber eye, like a robot eye. Cause in 40K, every, every little pet and every little animal has to have a little weird technology, something or other to it. But yeah, these models are good. There's, uh, there's nothing wrong with them, but they just don't, to me, they don't look fun to paint. It looks like it's just going to be a whole bunch of stuff to do. Whenever I'm painting a model, I like to like kind of work on things in sections. I'm going to paint the arms. I'm going to paint the face. I'm going to paint the cloak. I'm going to paint the dick cloth. And then all of a sudden the model's done. But on models like these where there's just so much, there's a baggie and a belt and a belt buckle and a key and greaves and pants and pantaloons and chaps and dockers and <laughs> all of this stuff. It just becomes like just such a mess of painting miniatures like these. Every now and then for a hero or for a character, I think it's more than worth it. But like. These guys remind me also of the rank and file Cities of Sigmark models. They just don't look like they're fun to paint. They look like a slog. Next up, we got some Warhammer Underpants, a game I haven't given a try yet, but it does look like fun. I like the I like the idea of the grid based system. It kind of turns it into a little bit more of a board game, but you get these absolutely epically beautiful models. Ooh, and we got some undead thingies or nearly dead thingies or just sticky looking thingies, which I am. I am here for all three of those options. Got like a spooky necromancer, <laughs> more zombies. Whoever, if anybody's out there is like bought or collected all of the Games Workshop zombies that they've come out with, I feel like you got a really nice spread of weird, weird zombie miniatures. Little shovel. We got a guy who's got a little extra rib cage hanging out and a pickaxe. Whoa, we got a guy who's really having some problems with his ribs. His inside parts are all out on the outside. 
He's got his little hammer and nail. Some really, really fun zombies. And a, 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 a were... A were monkey? Like a... A werewolf? I guess... Or no, it's a, but it's a vampire because it's got like bat ears and bat fangs. I don't know what it is, but I like it. It is kind of spooky. It kind of looks like Michael Jackson from the Thriller music video. Like when he turns into a werewolf, but it's like a cool werewolf. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't look that much like him, but it just kind of reminds me of it a little bit. Yeah, he's not bad. He's got he's he's nice and spooky and he's kind of got like the little the little Batman weapons. I don't know what you call that, but on Batman's arm, he's got like three spikes. And this guy also has three spikes, but they're like his bones. It's a very cool little model. It's a nice little warband of spooky, scary skeleton stuff. They would look super good, like prime them brown and just like dry brush them with pale green. And all of a sudden they're going to look amazing. And then you just pick out some of the details. They look like a lot of fun. And then we got Warhammer, the Horus Heresy, not the tiny little one, but the real one. I guess it's weird that the two games, I don't get it, but we got the Solar Auxilia in proper plastic which is fine. I've never been a huge fan of the Solar Auxilia. I feel like if I'm playing Legion or if like I'm playing the Horus Heresy, I want to play a Legion. I want Space Marines, like uh, Space Marines on top of Space Marines on top of Space Marines. And these are just fellas and they're very good fellas. In fact, I actually think they would work really, really well just as generic Imperial Guard or as Necromunda dudes because of their weird, they just, they're weird like, diving bell costumes that they wear. I think that they, they do look fantastic. Their tanks are very interesting. They got a nice look. Their sentinel is the weirdest thing. It's just bizarre. <laughs> it's, ah, it's, it's so weird. I don't even know what to make of it. It doesn't seem to make much sense. I guess the mechanics all work. It's just, why would you make it so, like its body so tall? Interesting. And their tanks are excellent. Really, though, I feel like the infantry is where they shine a lot. Games Workshop has done an OK job painting them. I don't know what particular order or branch these solar auxilia are, but you paint their body one color and then you paint their little chest and helmet armor a different color. Boom, they're going to look perfect. They're going to look really, really good. They're a little they're a little fancy, but I feel like that fanciness is actually OK because, again, like they've got they've got this this like, I guess, waist armor that with some greaves that hang off of it. They've got these tubes running around in their clothing. But I think you just painted a color. Yeah, like you painted a color, you dry brush it a little. Like in the actual military, all of the stuff is painted the same color camouflage or the same like same basic color to make it all match. And I feel like you could easily get away with that with these guys. I think they would paint up really nicely. Wow, the sergeant with the Volkite pistol. It's really going for it. He has got a weird look on his face. <laughs> doesn't it? I mean, I feel like Vince would never emote this hard, but doesn't it look a little like Vince Ventrella? Just a little bit. I don't know. It's it's a, it's an interesting looking character. <laughs> interesting. I like that sword with the holes cut out of it. I guess that would make it a lot lighter. Yeah, the solar auxilia are neat. If I was to play the Horus Heresy, I would definitely do word bearers. I like the word bearers. I think they're neat. Um, I don't know if I would want to play them in real or in tiny. I feel like I'm not, I wouldn't want to play them in real because I already have Space Marines in 40K and it's like the same thing. But it, tiny, I don't know. I feel like I really like the look of Drop Zone Commander and Drop Fleet Commander for my like ultra miniature scale gaming. So I don't know. The Horus Heresy, I like the books. The books are great. But I don't know if I need to play a whole war game based on them. But these guys are really cool. Their tanks are a little much. They're a little bedazzled. I do like the uh, the kind of two tone look that they've got, where they've kind of got like a base gray and then they've got an accent color of kind of a brass. But they do seem weirdly way more technologically advanced than modern 40K. And I guess 40K has regressed 10,000 years. And so an awful lot could change in that time. But it's kind of the Star Wars effect. Right. Because when George Lucas made the prequels, he could do anything. And he had unbelievably incredible artists who had, you know, 10 extra years of experience making cool things. And so everything in the prequels looks so much more advanced and cool than everything in the pre in the original trilogy. So I guess, yeah, it's the trilogy effect. These are the old. Uh, 
this is the new modern hotness that just happened to take place 10,000 years. You could say it's from a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Tons of really, really interesting and cool reveals. I feel like it's been a while since we've gotten one of these reveals and it's like, oh, I'm going to buy some of this stuff or like kind of a lot of this stuff. I do need some mandrakes. Games Workshop has got me with the crude. Oh, if they show off a Narlock. If Games Workshop makes a Narlock, I'm going to have to find a way. Maybe I'll drive to like John's house and steal his early coffee. <laughs> oh, I need I need more crude in my life. I have a little fledgling crude army. I got two crude toxes and 16 crudes. And I have my custom uh, crude hero, crude lord, crude lord. <laughs> and I need I need a whole squad of crude babies. A little baby crude hounds. Ah, it's yeah, it's super, super fun. Almost, almost as much fun as our Patreon. Over there, we have a brand new set of terrain every single month. And this month we have the crashed spaceship. An absolutely monstrous set of terrain, perfect for blocking line of sight, creating a separation on the board and is just the definition of a centerpiece model. It is absolutely epic. And if you always want to stay up to date on the goings on here at Eons of Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, this month we're picking three followers to receive this month's terrain and one follower to receive this terrain physically printed by Only Games. You can follow the link in the description below to sign up to our newsletter. Let me know in the comments below what was your favorite thing from the reveals. Mine is obviously the Crute, and I didn't like the Mandrakes that much, although I'm a hypocrite because I'm going to buy a whole bunch of them. So what do I know? Ah, uh, some really, really cool minis. Yeah, no, that's just really cool. Bye.